And it is my pleasure to introduce the next speaker, Professor Ji Wu from Beijing. And the talk is, the title of the talk is Homotopy Patterns and Cobblings on Braids. So please, can we start? Okay. Uh, yes. Okay. Thank you very much. Yeah, it's uh, my pleasure to to give a talk in this conference. It actually, I would like to thank organizers and want to say happy birthday to uh, Andrew Wesling and uh, Valerie Padakov. Actually, both of them are my good friends for years. So I don't want to count. There are too many things, so I pick up something. Uh, which I, my interest part for home to be aspects of the North theory. So we did a lot of work with, uh, joined with uh, Larry Badakov. I think they will continue on this project, I hope. Okay. So now I'm working in, in, in the Beijing is, a, is actually applied map center of Yao. <laughs> so this, this is a good place in the sense that we can play uh, Either pure map, or if you are interested in applications, ways <laughs> also we can do. So I think now seems a good time to travel things back to normal, at least or go back to normal soon. So I hope uh, you will come to visit us to see what's going on in this new institute. Okay, so now uh, that my talk will be actually there's a tablings and the homotopy pattern was a. Uh, was recently proposed by my another good friend, uh, the Loma Mikalo, recently. So I tried to say some story on all. Okay, so here's the here's the so-called homotopy pattern. Okay. So you know, there's many of our friends maybe know this person. I think uh, I, I pointed to this person. This is a mathematician. Okay. It's also, okay. but you see his eyes, he's watching something else. But, uh, but anyway, so uh, people know the story, what's going on to him, okay. So now he's, uh, I like his, uh, his uh, theories, his uh, so-called homotopy pattern. Okay. So this is actually philosophical uh, ideas. So you want to look at something uh, to be some intersections of substructure, okay, coming from many stories. And then you can see some, we can see some, some obvious part. Right? And so then we try to understand that we can cushion out. And then the interesting part of home to be will, will come into this picture. So this will be, uh, I, I, I already explained a bit. So this is what uh, Luman Carlo uh, proposed. So if you want to look at the detail, you can look at his uh, article. That I mentioned here. So this is in the proceedings of ICM uh, 2022. Okay, so now uh, now I try to explain the uh, story on this one. So first one, actually, the uh, previous talk by Professor Kawauchi already mentioned why there's a, a spherical question, right? So there's a version of the algebraic version is the something about uh, the Okay, so you get a free group of uh, finite red. You get some uh, special, uh, uh, say, about well, these some subgroups, okay, that have some conditions. And what you need equivalent uh, situation in algebra is that there's an obvious part. You look at the commutator of two subgroups, it will contain in the, well, both sides, it should be normal, so contain to the intersection subgroup. Now, the question actually, the uh, what the spherical question in the equivalent version will say that they are should be equal. In other words, the gap must be trivial. Okay. So that's the uh, game. Okay. So now, and uh, this kind of game, we can look at the historically, it's very backwards to many years ago, right? So it's, uh, Ron Lode has tried to understand what's going on for the second homotopy group in terms of a uh, group theory. So you will see that the, if you look at the uh, some uh, normal subgroups of uh, group P, so you look at the K pi one, and they just take the homotopy push out, and then ask what's going on for the second homotopy, right? For first homotopy, 
Well, fundamental group, uh, they have uh, Van Kempen and Thielen. So now people make uh, ask what's going on for higher fundamental group. And well, the interesting part uh, for second fundamental group actually related to this kind of things like intersection and the commutator stuff. Okay, so now uh, uh, we have part a, a little bit on these uh, games and uh, to to understand like uh, the uh, Higas readings that this was detected two years ago. So try, actually we can detect some information from these kind of big tech uh, use uh, run Rodez here and we can apply to there. Okay, so now it uh, now I'm back to talk about this uh uh to be pattern. Okay, so uh, it's uh, this uh, Luma was uh, proposed here. So this is the article. Actually, this is the article invited by ICM. Uh, so they actually use, um, you will see that there's a use the home to theory to solve a long standing problem in group theory. So this concerns the dimension subgroup problem. So I give a, a brief uh, introduction on, on the question first. Right? So this, uh, I think many of you already know much more on this topic about the dimension subgroup. Okay, so I just, uh, if I do not explain correctly, uh, just to point out. Okay, so the, the, the idea will be like this. So you look at the group and you look at the augment, a group ring. Okay, then you look at the augmentation ideal. And of course we can make the product of augmentation ideal. So that means that we got a few tracing on the uh, group ring, right? And now you intersecting with the, the group itself. So you create a subgroup on the uh, on the group G, original group. So if you put a one plus I M of G, so intersecting with them, you get a subgroup. Okay. So this gives a uh, uh, a, a, a tower of a uh, subgroup of a G, right? So you keep uh, now. Let's say you uh, keep doing this one, so you get data one, with data two, contain data two, contain data three, and so on and so on. Right? Now, now what's going on? Well, if you look at the lower center series of groups, right? So you can define in in terms of the uh, committed this, so you start with gamma one of G, just G itself, and the gamma two of G is just the committed subgroup, and the gamma three, you take commuted of gamma two and G itself, so far and so on. So it, it, it is, uh, it will be, uh, actually, it's, uh, it's not hard, it's easy to check that the gamma M of G is supposed to be a subgroup of delta M. That M of G, this is for any G and for any M, it's always true. Okay. Now the question is the that uh, well, well, whether they are equal. <laughs> so now the historically the backwards to 90 uh, uh, 30s, uh, there's a <coughs> back to Magnus work. Uh, so I put a little bit of remark because I found it quite a fun on this history. So, so for three group, uh, they are actually coincide each other. Right? And uh, uh, historical remark will be like uh, uh, Magnus seems to propose the conjecture on this statement first, right? And then there's a follow up. There are two group proofs, and uh, one is uh, Magnus himself. And uh, there are some small gaps uh, in the uh, uh, slight gap in Magnus proof, uh, but that can be solved by use uh, weight uh, identities in his paper. So actually, maybe contribution may be given by both. Uh, Graham seems to also publish a paper, but uh, according to some remarks, that there was a serious gap, which seems difficult to. Uh, mm -hmm. Uh, uh, like uh, to you know to to, uh, to uh, overcome. So that's uh, the part on 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 the flip. Then uh, it comes out an uh, interesting story that there's a lot of claims that this must be true for everything, any group, and even appears in the famous <laughs> reference. Right, this book will be 
is really a classical book. So there are a lot of classical works people just continue to claim, but without uh, uh, mathematical proof. That's something sometimes interesting. So we can give a philosophical claim uh, all the time, but uh, mathematics will one requires to do a proper proof. So, so, but anyway, until the story, so there's another famous guy. Even famous now, uh, you, I think many of you know this uh, Rips, right? So bring back to Rips, and uh, uh, well, in mathematics, of course, he's famous. Now he's also famous in, in, in the applications, like Rips complex. Well, actually, Victorio, uh, Victorious Rips complex appears in data science. In data analysis, okay. So uh, now Rix makes the count example. So that, that's here. He just constructed the loop. Okay. So here, here's the answer. So you get that four modulo by gamma four is a C two. Okay. So okay. This opens another story. So then, uh, uh, to my understanding, on the history of this part, there of course Rix uh, example. Opens the story. What's going on for dimension quotient? Okay, so now for and uh, well, and then uh, there are some uh, few information one can see. So testing one, two, three, it works. Okay, so that's now the story. Maybe for m greater than or equal to four, then uh, it will be clear to check that the the, the dimension quotient are abelian. So in uh, in the part of history somehow in 1979, okay. So I don't know whether I can pronounce the name uh, properly. This was called what? Short Green or uh, uh, okay. Uh, he's uh, uh, seems uh, to my understanding he was in uh, uh, in Berkeley or, or Stanford or Berkeley maybe. Uh, he's, he's a student of uh, uh, Stallings. Okay. So uh, his thesis seems to work on this topic, but I search back to his paper and go back to what's going on in, in his thesis. So uh, now the interesting part, okay, so let's uh, look at the, the part of this one. So he got the result actually quite uh, fundamental. So it says that this uh, dimension quotient briefly say that uh, as a bounded exponent. Okay. So so you, you given M, actually you have certain Integer, they, they can say multiple by by the, this integer. This only depends on m, right? X times uh, any elements times s m will be always zero. So so that seems you get a bounded, so called bounded exponent, right? So say for example this is the ten, then everybody multiple by ten is zero. So so you you get exponent or like each element in a beautiful order is at most uh, say ten, right? So that's the uh, interesting part, the result, the global one. So here, here's a, a more concretely, he's in, this is in his paper. He stated that dm should be what? dm is gamma m. With GM, no, dm is delta m. Okay, what I uh, dimension subgroup. And then uh, gm, what they denote is gamma m so from the lower century series part. And then here's some number, actually cm, he can construct the um, more concretely, okay, of this number, they always belong to that. So if you quotient out, it, it, this is uh, element, uh, any element in dimension quotient will multiple by CM will be zero. So that's the uh, story for, for the, here yeah, I, I also, I put a bit, uh, I curious what's going on, why he make this statement, so I, I look at the back. Oh, this should be Berkeley's uh, thesis in 19, uh, 75, and I, I discovered that his supervisor is actually uh, John Stolling. Okay. And that's the something, he actually in his thesis, he made a conjecture later, <laughs> after a few years later, he solved it. Okay. So uh, now, now the, uh, a bit of story on, uh, so let's see the story. And it seems that the story on this uh, dimension quotient is uh, keep, uh, keep going. Uh, there's an interesting thing. So uh, there, there's a wonderful result given by uh, Gupta. Okay. So so he will be, he can look at the case that uh, if uh, G is a finite meta abelian group, then, then it has an exponent by given by a certain power of two. So, 
and for all m. So let's somehow give the belief that uh, uh, maybe this exponent maybe can be controlled by the power two. two. Okay, so maybe only two totally become the uh, Well, uh, then uh, it seems that uh, then uh, this capital uh, will be make some some. Uh, you just still continue to work on this one, right? So uh, he will make some claims, okay? So he make claims, so the exponent must be a power of two, but uh, his proof seems uh, uh, do not understandable. Uh, well, that, is, uh, that looks like a non-understandable uh, proof. Uh, so now the uh, makes the story, I move back to uh, Mikhail of uh, uh, work so that's is the in archive paper claims that okay so they actually are some false so what uh, what uh captors uh claim is uh, for a general group right it's uh not uh, not really uh correct so they found that for any any opinion group with a bounded exponent okay so you can always for dimension quotients and such that contains uh, H is a subgroup. So in other words, you, you get really odd proportions. <laughs> Actually, this is the, uh, uh, it seems uh, I agree that this is a really, uh, is, a, is a wonderful progress on this topic. So we cleaned up some, uh, you know, a lot of uh, uh, misunderstanding on this topic for a long year, a long time. So here's the, I would say this uh, significant, this is only my comment, so my views on their work. So I uh, put the first uh, statement from the uh, short green theorem. So what they claim, he said that any, uh, any dimension quotient, right, is an uh, abelian um, group. Okay, with the bounded export. Now the uh uh, uh the uh Mikolov theorem claims that any abelian group uh with uh, uh with, with bounded exponent is uh, is a subgroup of a certain dimension quotient. So we put these two together, actually they gives uh the class of dimension quotients were equal to the class of a building group with a bounded exponent. So they put two theorems together, give a perfect understanding on the, on the dimension quotients, at least as, as a class of uh, groups, right? And uh, now it, it will be uh, blew up my, my, uh, my mind in a certain way when we talk about it. So I, I may not have time to say more, but I just say why I would be interested if you look at this game, well, there's a so-called uh, bounded exponent. It was uh, <laughs> quite a long story in homotopy theory uh, concerning the bounded exponent of homotopy groups. Well, uh, okay, so we you know there there's uh, several conjectures of this one. So so the and uh, I think this will be make some bring some mysteries how the uh, dimension quotients will be related to homotopy theory. Okay. And then, uh, well, actually, in their proof, they, they really use homotopy theory. So, this is one of the interesting parts of that. How do you solve that? So, we, so I looked back for their paper, and uh, what they found? Well, the first, uh, okay, there are actually two theories to, to make a key point. One is that you have dimension quotient, so you can Construct a certain group G, okay, so that the for M sufficient large, I, I think uh, they should put, assume M to be large enough. Then the homotopy group of uh, two sphere will be inside here, so invented here. And that is really, of course, we know that the homotopy group of two sphere has odd prime uh, portion. And the more generally, actually, so if you really get a, a real proof of the main result, you do need uh, the uh, the the wedge of two spheres. So you look at the homotopy group of wedge of two spheres. So what they get is a torsion part of uh, of a uh, wedge of two spheres, the homotopy group of uh, wedge of two spheres, take a torsion part, you can invent it. 
into certain uh, dimension subgroup. Well, uh, let a uh, dimension quotient, dimension quotient. So this will be given amazing because Hamilton group of S2, where just two is huge. Okay, so they can uh, contain Hamilton group of any dimensional sphere. That will be allows you that you are able to construct it as big as possible. But because of the executive Miller uh, theorem, the home to be over two as two batches two, so you break down to to that. So it will include the home to group of all dimensional spheres. Okay. <coughs> okay so now, now I maybe um, I say a bit uh, because of timing. Yeah, I uh, say shortly. So. Before that, they got this result. Actually, we are working on this topic for a long time. So I, I will say also involved some work with uh, uh, Valeri Patakov. So the pre uh, previously, we have been looking at the homotopy and the braids. So this will be some years. So uh, this is about the Brownian braids of S2, modular Brownian braids of D2, exactly given by homotopy group. So if you are uh, a Brownian place over D2 is understandable in some sense, which can be written in terms of commutators. Okay, so we know the generator, but this is a mystery. Okay, so Brownian place over S2 is a mystery. And then it turns out that the gap is given by the home to the group of, uh, of spheres. And uh, then general one, so this is, uh, your, so I think uh, this conference maybe has a name on this one, right? Here's a Benelli Batacom. So, so, so we, we actually work on this topic as well. And then, then uh, uh, there'll be a, this is the rate one. I, I saw the uh, Volodya machine showed up already. So there's another interesting game is about the Li, uh, Li algebra on this one. And then we have project will continue on this one. Li algebra will relate to the Vasily uh, invariance on the, uh, the Brunian brain. So, so, so the, we actually we got some work to continue on this topic. And uh, then uh, there will be a, a Luman Mikov, uh, we have extended uh, the game to the, mm, let's say, to higher dimension spheres, okay, use an operator. So uh, I think I talked this before, right? So actually, you, you need to use the braid uh, free product with the uh, amalgamations and subgroups. You can Got some homotopy aspects to relate to the homotopy group of high dimension spheres. So there will be like a, I would say like a, like a two colored knot theorem, right? If you take the free product of uh, braids and with some amalgamation, so there's some subgroup they can see same color and then mix it together. It turns out that this homotopy of high dimension spheres uh, can always appear in, in, in some way. And okay, so now the we say a bit on the on the uh, this virtual game, right? This is the, I think uh, uh, the project uh, uh, Larry has been visited me before this uh, COVID uh, nineteen started. Okay, so we, we work. Uh, we are interested to work on this. Uh, what's going on for the virtual virtual. Uh, Braids and try to see this uh, cabling system. So it, it, it will be the cabling in uh, like uh, you take uh, the moving system and uh, like a double string and uh, keep going. So you got a cabling operator. Uh, that will be a nice connection with uh, home to be theory. In other words, you, you will create a some bridge group construction. So then a lot of questions can ask what's going on. Okay, so that's like uh, the games we are looking at the genesis, right? We write as a uh, really is a, you know, he's a nice, uh, you know, he is a nice uh, to draw these pictures, right? <laughs> <laughs> Perfect one, okay. And uh, now, uh, now there, there'll be a, a work, you know, okay? So we did, uh, did some uh, several work along this direction. So the, the, uh, this, uh, these two works are uh, supposed to be done uh, by uh, during Valerie's visit to me at, uh, when I was still was uh, in uh, Hebei. Okay, so where I, I think we were, I, I assume Valerie will continue to come. Uh, we will continue to work on these games. Now there's some interesting part for four string will be uh, nice. 
or three strings uh, nice, but general n string somehow what we're going on. I somehow, okay, let, let me put the question first, right? So we try to understand the, the Brunian, uh, Brunian uh, bridge in, in the uh, virtual sense. Virtual sense. So, in other words, uh, you, uh, usual Brunian bridge means what? Means uh, if you take uh, remove any one of them, it can be trivial, right? So, so now we try to see that okay. So, what's going on for virtual bridge? But actually, if you combine together with the classical case, we can see. It, it, suppose that you start with uh, uh, with a subgroup, right? And uh, uh, subgroup uh, of a virtual uh, pure uh, group, and then uh, you, you look at the uh, look at the what's going on for Brunian, so you can look at the intersection. Right? So so a lot of stuff can can be tried to determine uh, determine what's going on for this uh, for general more general slightly more general say, subgroup H. How can we understand the Brunian uh, like uh, relative to or restricted to this uh, subgroup? And uh, well, uh, now uh, I think uh, I will see that uh, there will be uh, yes, yeah, so one picture is you consider the following uh, story. So this uh, this question seems to be backwards. So like at the, in the beginning, even like uh, I think in 2008, when we during Obawafa, we already talk to this question uh, it should be like uh, when uh, Larry and uh, uh, Bologna and uh, Loma Mikol and I will be we have a uh, what they call IIP program at the Wafa so we make a lot of discussions there's so one question is about the curious on, on this uh, what's going on you, you just look at the two string first okay? so keep this cabling construction right so two string, you get the two string. Okay, so in classical case or in virtual case, so you look at look at you look at the classical case first. So you get a, like a A one two. Okay, so you just and then what's going on? You can do cabling, so you can uh, cabling the first string for many times, and then cabling the next string for many times. So so you will collect uh, some elements in in, in, in general break, right? General strings. And then, then you look at the subgroup generally. It seems to not, uh, Fred Conner had up, I, I did, and I did it, it so look, this group was generally uh, a, a free subgroup. Uh, well, it, it, it's actually, if you write down in terms of generator, it's, it's quite complicated. Now, we, uh, for, for, the, uh, for the virtual bridge, we can try to start with two strand. Okay, now you just look at this cabling operator to move up to VPN, right? And uh, then uh, we try to understand uh, what's going on this uh, homotopy, now Luhmann called homotopy pattern uh, theory. So you have something which looks like we'll call, we can call obvious part, means understandable part. And the something you intersecting with the blue name, not quite understandable, we try to understand. We claim several times that this is, should be like uh, given by homotopy group. And it turns out uh, that we still cannot uh, give a uh, proper proof, right? I think uh, when uh, uh, Bradley visit, was visiting me and we tried to really get uh, a lot of smart ideas to try to see whether we can get it, somehow we still, to my understanding, uh, still we, we cannot prove it, right? So, so Bradley can, can correct me if we find the proof now. So, so in the land, it's better to just make a conjecture. Okay, so so far still make a conjecture. So it would be uh, the story like uh, yeah, we we hope we uh, at least claim that expect that this will be given by home to be of, of, of the uh, it, well, this will be actually the same for a So uh, that I think it should be my end of my talk. Okay, so thank you very much. Thank you for the interesting talk. And are there any questions?
May yes, I ask? please. So uh, thank you, thank you, Zio, for this nice talk. Uh, can you please suggest some uh, reference for uh, this cabling operator? Mm -hmm. Yeah, we will see the gap. Uh, about, some uh, nice reference for cabling operators. Oh, nice things about the cabling operator. Let's actually, there's interesting things. This is actually the bridge between this uh, bridge theory and the uh, home theory. theory. So look at it here. This is, uh, this is a cabling something called, well, cabling is coming from Italy to the doubling operator. Okay. So you can double one string, double another. And once you consider this way, in terms of a language in home to theory, this is so-called, uh, in terms of, uh, okay, you know, uh, people, uh, well, you know, simplicial complex, how can you move to do home to theory? This so-called the, the simplicial set, actually backwards, uh, Ellenberg, uh, Zilber in 1950s, 90, so they tried to do work on home to theory for simplicial complex, then you have to introduce so-called degeneracy operators. So you make it like, a, say, you get a simplex, it's zero, one, two, now we can double in that one, so get a zero, one, one, two, and it is a degenerated two simplex, and so forth. So systematically, you need uh, this operator. When you do that, it turns out the home to theory works smoothly in such a combinatorial way, so this so-called simply, uh, simply home to theory. So we play these games to, to, to look at and that's the doubling system. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank you. And I see one more question in the chat line. Mm -hmm. Is it possible to define a simplicity group on the singular period break groups from Tatiana? Uh, yes, that's a good question. It, it, uh, uh, sim uh, it is a singular period break group. Okay. Uh, well, the Mm. Well, I have to look at the detail. I think it is a possible. My brief idea will be like this. Uh, I, I, it's likely uh, the the op we need to handle the two operators. So one is just uh, remove string. Okay, so this is simply okay, right? Just delete it. And the second thing we need a kind of a, a doubling system. So so you need to backward. So you can actually let uh, exactly like uh, when you when I take example like a CLO one two as a, a two simplex we put a CLO one one two okay so actually one is a, is a joint together we can put a CLO CLO one two and a CLO one two two so you got the three operators go up uh, uh, it, it it will be likely you, you can do that and uh, it, it will get something quite strange and interesting if you play this uh, brief. And then, then look at what's going on for some bridge group obtained from this geometric construction. So, yeah. More questions? So if, if there are no, oh yes. Uh, one more question in the chat line. Ah, ah that, that's a good question. So the doubling is not a homomorphism, this is so-called cross-distribution group, twisting a little bit. Okay. For pure one, it is a homomorphism. For general one, you will see that you, you're moving around. So this so-called cross-distribution is across the structure. Okay, thank you. Uh, maybe I even ask some question? Yeah. So G, G, you, uh, you mentioned there is a group which contains uh, all the homotopy groups uh, somewhere. Mm -hmm. Oh, in the beginning, yes. Uh, is this a here, right? Yeah. This yeah. is the, the game by, by, uh, by this uh, Pasodi and uh, Nicola, yes. Okay. So what more is known about this group? I mean, uh, anything, anything else has been oh, said? Yeah. Oh, you mean uh, you about concerning this group? This yeah. is a, well, they construct a group in, in constructed in such a co uh, complicated way. He has a construction of group, right? He has a generators and the really now the purpose the, in this group they try to show that the the dimension quotient. So you give a group, and then you get the dimension quotient, and then home to the group can fill in there. Nice. That's the way they they they, they, they try to prove that. 
So I would say there's a lot of things we can look at in, uh, further in this topic. So there the are examples which are trying to contribute to examples which is what claim that any, uh, what do you claim? Any ability group with bounded exponent, they can be invented into dimension subgroup, right? So now we can, of course, we can ask further what's going on. Thank you. Mm -hmm. So if there are no more questions, then let us thank the speaker again.